Tonight we are going to be looking at chapter 17 and chapter 18 of the book of Revelation. So we're getting very close to the very end. So very quickly I'll review chapters 1 through 16. So at least we have a foundation of what the book is all about. So chapter 1 uh, talks about, gives us an introduction to the book. And before I forget, anyway, uh, the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible that has got a blessing attached to it. And the blessing is the fact that anyone who reads it, who understands it, and who heeds it will be blessed. So it's only the people that actually put it into practice that will be blessed. Also, the overall structure of the book is found in Revelation 119, three sections to the book. One, uh, the things that uh, we have seen. Uh, that is chapter 1, introduction, blessings for the people that heed the, the advice or the, the uh, word. And also we saw the glorify Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, of course, commissioned uh, Apostle um, uh, John uh, to uh, write the book. Write what he sees and what is going to be shown by Jesus Christ. The section 2 is the chapters 2 and 3 that has to do with letters to the churches and uh, to set expectations for the churches and also all, all, all Christians in general. Uh, section 3, uh, things thereafter, that's uh, from chapter 4 to chapter 22. Chapters four, uh, chapter 4 is about the rapture, the trip to heaven. So one of these days, Christ is going to come back and say it's time to go. So I pray that every one of us in here will be ready to go with him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Chapter 5, we saw the scroll, and Christ is the only one that can take the scroll and open it. So, and as he opens the scroll, the scroll, of course, is the will or the inheritance of Christ because of the work that he did on Calvary that he's now going to take over the earth from the devil. So as he opens the, the seal on the scroll, something happens in in uh, on the earth so the the first um in chapter six we saw the the six or the six uh, seals were opened and one two three four has to do with war uh famine plague and uh of course uh beasts or uh, pandemics or whatever you want to call it uh so it, it's going to be a very difficult time on the earth as the seals are open it's also at this particular time that the Antichrist comes up. So the first seal is actually the arrival of the Antichrist. And then, of course, he's going to make war and cause famine and all the other things that go along with it. So that's uh, chapter 6 in chapter... And at the end of chapter... Uh, at the end of the first four seals, uh, about a quarter of the population of the world will be wasted. So, uh, and then we go to chapter 7, which is good news, good news in the sense that we see the 144,000 Jewish evangelists that will be sealed, that the devil won't be able to touch them, and as a result of the work that they're going to do, a lot of people are going to be saved. Unfortunately, they'll be saved after the rapture, so most, most of them will be murdered. Uh, chapter Eight and nine is the um, the trumpet judgment, the seven trumpet judgments. Again, that's another level of judgment that comes on top of the seals, and uh, seven of them. And at the end of uh, the the sixth one, and not counting all the other casualties that the other five is going to cause, uh, at that particular point, about half of the population of the world will be wasted. So now we get to uh, chapter 10, uh, which is about the little book uh, that the angel told um, Apostle John to eat, and it's bitter and it's sweet. So that's an indication of the fact that there's still more headache to come. Uh, but the good news is the fact that we get into the very end. Uh, chapter 11, we saw the, the temple, uh, which means that there will be another temple will be built. Uh, with the permission of the uh, Antichrist and the people that uh, have um, a mosque in that area right now. Somehow the Antichrist is going to come up with a deal for them to build the third temple. 
and we saw the temple was measured, and that's a reminder that Israel is not going to be forgotten, that Israel will be taken care of. We also saw the two witnesses that will witness to the Jewish people and also to the world that Christ is the answer to all the things that everyone is looking for. Uh, and then we go to um, uh, chapter, uh, I think we, okay, chapter 12. We saw again a little bit about, we saw the woman, the child, the dragon. And the woman, of course, is Israel. Israel, the child, is Christ. And then the dragon, of course, is Satan. Satan was kicked out of heaven. So he's now on the earth. That's the only place he can now go to. He can't go back to heaven and accuse us like he does right now to say that we are doing something wrong. But, of course, it's going to be mad like hell, right? So which means, of course, there will be a lot of now... Is going to focus his attention on making life difficult for the people on earth. So, um, chapter 13, we see uh, a transformation because now we see the beast of the sea, which is basically the Antichrist with Satan indwelling in him. So, he's now uh, like an incarnate of Satan, okay? Then we also saw the beast of the earth, which is the false prophet, which is another, the, the, the Antichrist will be like a world ruler. The false prophet is going to promote a new religion that everybody would have to buy into. And at that particular point, he's going to institute the mark of the beast. So if you don't have the mark of the beast, you're in trouble. Then in chapter 14, we see the evangelists, the 144 evangelists, that they are safe and sound, and they're going to make it to the new millennium. Uh, chapter 15 is a prelude of the bold judgment, okay, because the last some trumpet judgment is going to open the bold judgment. And chapter 16, we saw the bold judgments and the more severe than the trumpet judgment. And then, of course, um, and the, the seventh one of the, of the bold judgment is going to create an earthquake and is going to also result in a, a hundred pound Hillstorm, and it's at that particular point, that combination of all those things anyway, that's when Christ is going to stand on Mount of Olives and the war or, or the battle of Armageddon will probably take place, will pre take place at that particular point. So in a nutshell, we're getting close um, to the very end of the book of Revelation. Tonight, we're going to be looking at 17 and 18, and 17 and 18 deals with the destruction of the evil foundations on earth. The destruction of the evil foundation on earth. And the, the destruction is the, the terminology for, uh, I guess we're all familiar with the terminology Babylon. Okay, but Babylon stands for two things in, in scripture. It stands for a religious system. It also stands for a political commercial power. Okay, that rules the world right now. So we have a, a false religion that started with uh, in Babylon, ancient Babylon. You go back to Genesis, I think Genesis 11, uh, with uh, with with uh, Nimrod. Okay, which was a, a great hunter and a great. It uh, was the first world dictator anyway. So the false religion started out at the Babel, uh, the Tower of Babel. Uh, and, and that's how all that uh, system of controlling people came into being. So you have a false religion that is attached to Babylon. You also have the re false, re uh, the, the political and the commercial side of it also attached to uh, uh, Babylon. So in chapter 17, we're going to see the destruction of the, uh, the, the false religion. And chapter 18, we're going to see the destruction of the commercial, political, all that has to do with controlling people that is put in place to be able to control the world right now. And uh, uh, so that uh, only very few people benefit from what's going on in the world, so to speak. So chapter 17, like uh, um, after the church is raptured, there will of course be a lot of Millions of Christians would disappear all of a sudden. And people are going to be wondering, what are we going to do now? Is at that particular point that the, whatever is remaining on earth, they're going to get together. And plans are being made right now to make that happen because we're hearing about 
um, the World Council of Churches, uh, trying to say that we should all coexist, okay, uh, trying to say that, well, we all serve the same God. So now that the Christians are gone, usually the Christians that object, okay, <laughs> so now that the Christians are gone, everybody will get together and say, let's all, go, all get along and form this world religion. And that world religion now is what is the Antichrist is going to use to come to power because there's going to be a union between the Antichrist that is trying to rule the world or by force anyway because it's going to be a military guy but he's going to be very charis charismatic that people are going to listen to him. But at the same time, it needs, it, it needs a counterpart to be able to at least come because to, to come to power. So it's going to be able to use this false uh, world religion as the basis of of coming to power, so it's going to uh, it's going to uh, get uh, have a deal with uh, with this org world organization that is an, a religious organization, and there will be a, an agreement, of course, between the two of them to be able to say that hey, we are going to rule the world, and this is how things are going to be from now on. So if you go to um, Revelation 17, I'm going to read uh, from a couple of chapters and we'll, we'll talk about what all that means. So chapters, uh, Revelation 17, chapter 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying, uh, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made uh, drunk with the wine of uh, fornication. So he carried me away into in the spirit to, into the desert, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which has which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a hand having in her hand a cup, a golden cup full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications, and on her forehead was the name uh, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. So in chapter 13, we saw the beast. The beast, of course, is the Antichrist with uh, Satan now indwelling in him. So it's a, a Satan incarnate. And of course, he has a, an empire that he controls. And the empire is talked about here as, as having uh, 10 horns, the 10 horns means the ten empires that is going to uh, rule over. Uh, so is, is, is the, the relationship between of them is what is being shown to say that the woman is sitting on the beast, which means, of course, she is supported politically. The, the church, the false uh, church, uh, is supported politically by the beast and also shows that she has a relationship with the beast that makes it possible for her to be in that particular role for now, anyway. So the two of them are working together, the religious false religion and the, the Antichrist are working together to be able to get control of the world. So now we'll go to uh, 7 through 17. And this one has got a lot of more things that I need to explain. So I'm going to read a couple of verses and then do some explanation. Do read a couple of verses and do some explanation. So from 7 to, uh, let's start with 7 and 8. It says, But the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast she, that carries her, which are seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw was and is and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yes is. So what is going on in here in chapter 13? We saw the beast was uh, uh, had a wound that was fatal wound, whether it was assassinated or not, the Bible didn't say that. 
but somehow uh, he was alive again, so which is like a resurrection. So after this point right now, after it was fake re resurrection was recorded now, everybody is now comparing him to somebody that is uh, a supernatural human being, okay? So that is the idea when the, the, the beast was, is not, and yes is, okay? That's what that is saying. Then, of course, the, the whole idea of ascend out of the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit, of course, is Satan. So Satan is now indwelling in the in the anti and in the the antichrist so now he's got a different name they now call him the beast okay and then of course the woman that carries her or he, he, uh, uh, the woman of course um is sitting on the on the beast in which case like we said before there's a relationship between the two of them because they all benefit from that relationship uh then chapter i mean verse 9 says he here is the mind which has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. So one thing we know about the woman, the woman sits on a, a, a seven mountains. Okay, uh, that that is a, and we'll find out a little bit about what that means anyway. And then we go on to talk about the the antichrist that says there are also seven kings, five uh, are fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he will continue uh, a short time you must continue a short time the beast that was is not and he himself is also the eighth and is of the seven which is going to perdition now this has to start to do with the all the kingdoms all the empires that rule the world so they say five has fallen so if you go back and count i think it's that with the assyrian egypt um uh, Greece, uh, maybe the, uh, the Persians also, and then eventually the Roman Empire. Okay, so that's where we are at this particular point. That's the five that are falling. The sixth one, of course, is the Roman uh, uh, Empire. Okay, uh, and then and then he says, okay, uh, then he goes on to say, when he comes, you you must continue a short time, but it's also part of the seven. It's going to be the eighth, but it's also part of the seven. So if you go back and count all the empires that have gone in the in the world, okay, all the empires. I think the Roman Empire is the is the um, I think is the seventh one. So when this guy now comes, when Antichrist comes and is now the ruler of the world, temporarily is going to be called the eighth. Okay, but he's still part of the seven because what he did was to revive the old empires. Okay, but he's going to, uh, the, there's a discussion about whether everybody says it's going to be the old Roman Empire that's going to revive, but at the same time, some people are saying maybe it's more current empire that's going to revive because if you look at the Middle East right now, you got more Muslims than Christians and things of that nature. But the details, the, the, the gory details are not important. The only the, the only thing that we need to focus on is the fact that we don't want to be part of this system when it's going that is going to be destroyed in, in the in the uh, in, in the immediate future that is not too far from now. Then we go to uh, verse twelve. And it talks about the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they will receive authority from one hour as kings with the beast. In which case. They were all going to join together with the beast. Uh, these are of one mind, and they will uh, they will give their power and authority to the beast. In which case, they all come together, and then they would appoint the beast to rule over them. Uh, these will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. So. These are the people that are going to get together and fight against the uh, Satan is going to use them and also all the armies of the world from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south to come and help him to fight against the arrival of Jesus Christ. And of course, we know that they're going to fail. Then we go to verse 15. Then he says, uh, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the hollow sits are people, multitudes, nation, tongues, and the ten horn you saw. Uh, on the beast, these will hate the harlot, 
make her desolate and naked, heat her flesh, and burn her with fire. So what this is also remind us of the fact that eventually the, the relationship is going to go sour and she would be destroyed. And one of the things I want to point out is what is said in verse 17 that says that uh, for God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the word of God are fulfilled. In which case, everything we see around us, God is still in control and what he says is what is going to happen. And then, of course, the last thing verse he says, the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So, a couple of things that we know about the woman very quickly that we know that the woman the, is a harlot and it's a city and she sits on seven hills and her name is Mystery Babylon the Great. Uh, and then, of course, we know that she controls a lot of people. Uh, she's incredibly wealthy the, the way she's dressed. And, of course, she's been uh, um, persecuting saints all along in the history. Now, most scholars have looked at that and say, well, uh, there's only one religion or one group of people that we know of today that will fit that description. Now, um, but anyway, all this is subject to, <laughs> uh, subject to how you interpret the, the, the book of Revelation. All we know that is the fact that the one, really, one world religion is going to be headed by a very prominent organization that is in the world today. Okay, and uh, based on what this is saying, most scholars would say that points to Rome. So I'll leave it as that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll go to chapter 18, and this is about the destruction of the city of Babylon, which is the political and the commercial side of, um, of, of that, that, is, that is ruling the world and with its material greed and secularism. And is affecting every nation in the world at this particular point. Now, there's a city in Iraq that is the ancient Babylon. Uh, Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild it to some extent, but what this is saying is the fact that this Antichrist is going to actually build it up again. Remember, Babylon was uh, where Nebuchadnezzar was. It used to be one of the prominent cities in the world at one particular time. And this is also prophesying that. Uh, that will be rebuilt completely, it will be a, a, a center, uh, the capital city or the headquarters of the beast uh, when it's full in power. So the destruction of the woman, uh, this organization, of course, would ha happen around the, the middle point of the tribulation period, which will be three and a half years into the tribulation period. It's also at that time that the mark of the beast is going to come up, is that time that uh, there will be the, the, the temple will be um, will be defiled, okay, and it, the Antichrist is going to, going to set himself or the base will set himself off as the new religion that everybody has to worship him. So that's part of the reason why he has to destroy what he was using before to be able to now say, okay, I am the person that you need to worship. You don't need to worship anything else that somebody is telling you. The whole idea is the fact that now Satan wants to be worshipped. And it's going to be successful in doing that for three and a half years. Okay, so now this city, of course, is, in, uh, is mentioned in uh, chapter 18. And I'm going to just read a few things to kind of let you know how, how, uh, how prosperous the city is and what influence it has in the whole world. After these things, I'm reading uh, chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory, and he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, has become the dwelling place of demons, a prison from every foul, every foul spirit, and a cage or for every unclean and hated bird. So the whole idea is the fact that this has been announced ahead of time. Because like I said before, this city will be destroyed with that seven, uh, the seventh bowl. When that is poured out, okay, you're going to have a hit, great earthquake. And that earthquake is going to be worldwide. And then you've got this 100-pound 
hailstone uh, that will be coming down from heaven now, uh, coming down from heaven until this city is totally destroyed. So this is just announcing what is going to happen or what we read about in chapter 16, that this city would be de com completely destroyed at that particular time. So uh, one of the things I want to point out, and this is one of uh, what is mentioned in here that, uh, that I have, I, I'm not going to read it because we're running out of time, is the fact that uh, when you look at the evil that is going on in the world today, uh, people are going to say, when is God going to do something about it? God is all God is on timetable or when he wants to do something. And we just have to kind of keep that in mind that he's got his own timetable and when it's time for him to act, he's going to act and do what he needs to do. So at this particular point, he wants to destroy the city, he wants to destroy all the foundation of evil in the world so that uh, when we get to the new, the new earth and the new heaven that we're going to be talking about, or even the millennium reign of Christ, every form of evil would have been totally wiped out. And that's the whole idea behind the, all these judgments to make sure that the earth is free from any form of evil, whether it's political, whether it's commercial, whether it's whatever religion, it's got, it, they all have to go. And this is the process of doing that clean, house cleaning. Uh, then I'm going to go to verse 9. Then the king of the earth uh, who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, uh, for in one hour your judgment has come. So in which case it's just going to be destroyed like that. Uh, again, there's a lot of prophecies about this uh, Babylon being destroyed. Uh, like I said, it's a, a city that is still exists today, but was never completely destroyed. So this is when the, the God, uh, God has appointed to be totally destroyed. Now, one of the other things that um, I want to I mention, uh, the, the chapter 15, uh, the merchants of these things who became rich by her, we stand at a distance for fear of our torment, weeping and wailing and saying, alas, alas, ah, uh, the, that great city that has closed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and are done with gold and precious stones and pearls. So again, the, the focus, every, everybody is making money at this particular point. Everybody is rich, okay? Because remember, every, you, you have to, for you to buy anything, you have to have the mark of the beast. So now you don't have to worry about identity theft, okay? Uh, don't have to worry about somebody stealing your money. Everything is super controlled. So uh, I, whatever price they say you're going to pay is what you're going to pay. You can't negotiate anything. Right? <laughs> so every, uh, all, the, all the rich people are getting richer and all the poor people are getting poorer, so to speak, anyway. So they, everybody, everybody's having fun. Uh, and then, of course, we know that God is trying to let people know that, hey, I, I'm still in control. It's what I say that would go. Then we go on to uh, chapter um, uh, verse 21. Then a mighty angel uh, took up a stone like a great milestone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down, shall not be found anymore. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman will, uh, of any craft shall be found in you anymore. The sound of the millstone shall not be heard anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were great men of the earth, but for, for, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all who were slain on the earth. So the whole idea is to let us know that, hey, this city is responsible for a lot of the craziness that is going on in the world. And for that reason, the political system, all the greediness, all the things that we see where people, some people are making it and a lot of other people are just suffering or slaves of the people that are making it, uh, all that is going to be wiped away and we're going to start brand new with a new system, a new religion, a brand new system that is 
going to be based on what God says. So God is going to fulfill all his promises. Everything that Satan is doing to persecute believers to conquer and rule the world and oppose Christ and seek to stop him from returning to heart would all fail. As usual, uh, Satan is very stubborn, but he's going to lose this battle. And we shall see that uh, uh, next week when we look at 19. And by the time we get to 20, we'll be talking about the new millennium reign of Christ. A thousand years uh, reign on earth of Christ and what that means anyway. But one of the things that is obvious from what we have read is the fact that everything that it has to do with Satan would have to go. And the only people that will be uh, will be left after all this uh, that we've talked about would be the people that will go into the new millennium with Christ will be the people that are given their life to Christ. Now, one of the things that I find very interesting with all the stuff that is going on, okay, with all the things that we read about that is going to happen, yes, some people are going to survive, which is kind of mind-boggling. And not only that, also, some unbelievers are also going to survive. And we'll talk about what is going to happen when all this is said and done next week. So, But one thing I want to leave everybody with tonight is this, that um, all this is just keep preparing us, preparing our minds to be able to understand that God has a plan and that plan will be carried out. Now, we have a choice to be part of that plan but we have to also pay the price of being part of that plan. I would like to leave with, I uh, want to read a Bible verse uh, from John 14, and I'm going to read from 18 to 19, to, that, that says, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer, the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live you will live also. So in which case, we have a chance. Is either we follow the world or we follow Christ. If we follow Christ, if he lives, we live. And we know that he's going to live and we have the opportunity to live.